All right, this is first grade, module three, lesson 11. And in this lesson, students are gonna be continuing this concept of data collection. Uh, they're gonna be sorting their data, they're gonna be organizing their data, and then they're gonna be answering some questions based on that data that they've been collected or, or that they've been given. The idea for this whole lesson is, uh, and really this whole series of lessons is, man, this is a great opportunity for math to come alive and become meaningful to our first graders. So if you want, man, please feel free to consider not using the problems as given by Eureka Math and instead let your students have some autonomy, let them have some freedom in order to choose the questions that they want to do rather than just answer the questions that is given to them by Eureka Math. So let's get going on this. So I wanted to show you this. This is actually from their problem set. And ordinarily I do uh, problems from their homework. But I wanted to show you this because I love this little series of bullet points to think about. So the idea is we want our students to learn how to create a survey. And here's a nice little four steps. Step one, choose a question, all right? Now down here, because they are first graders, they were given five choices to choose from. But step one, choose your question. Step two, pick three answer choices. So the idea would be, well, if we chose, let's say we chose which fruit do you like the best? So your three answer choices might be apple, banana, and kumquat. Is that a fruit? I don't know. <laughs> so, so that's the idea. Anyway, is the idea would be we get the students to say, what are your three choices? Um, and then step three is ask your classmates the question. That's where, so like let's say down here you're going to see apple, and then down below you might see banana, and then even further you might see uh, apple, I mean uh, peach or something, because I'm not entirely sure if a kumquat is, is a fruit. So anyway, and then um, over here on the side, what are we going to do? That's where we're going to be collecting our tallies. And that's where, of course, we want one, two, three, four, cross. One, two, three, four, cross. One, two, etc. So we want students to be collecting their data, and we want them to organize their tallies in a nice, organized way, as opposed to just a string of tally, 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 tally. We want them bundled in groups of five. And then the uh, step four, one, two, three, four, step four is organize your data in uh, some sort of table and then start making decisions based on that or answering some questions based on that. So I just love these four bullet points. This is so such an awesome template that could be used by students in second grade and third grade and fourth grade. Um, as a middle school teacher, I've followed something very similar to these four bullet points with my sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. So I just wanted to give a, a shout out to that. That's a really good idea. Something else to think about, this is from their homework assignment. And the idea is for this homework assignment, students are supposed to go home and they're supposed to just answer how many all, all these five different questions. Kind of takes away from the, the autonomy of our first graders. Perhaps teachers and parents, as an alternative to this problem, let your students invent a brand new survey for their homework that they can then go and ask parents or ask people at home or ask students outside of their own classroom the questions so they can repeat what you saw in that previous slide, those four bullet points, and they can conduct their own survey. And of course, that might make this much more than a, a one-day homework assignment, but think about how much more the kids will love this kind of assignment if they get to create their own questions instead of just merely answering the questions that have been given them. And the last slide for this video. This is kind of important. It says students are voted on their favorite type of museum to visit. Each student could only vote for one, answer the questions based on the data in the table. Now the thing that we want to notice is they did not bundle this in tallies, you know, in groups of bundles of five. They just did people, and each person ostensibly 
is represents one person. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six. So six people voted for science. Now, ideally, what we should do is we should show one, two, three, four, five, six, and we should call this six. Now, Eureka Math doesn't ask us to intent uh, specifically to do this, but it's not a nice idea. So let's take a look at our one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's eight, right? So we're going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and that's eight. And then history is one, two, three, four, five, six, also six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So there are our survey results. And then, of course, once we've collected our survey results, we can start answering questions down here. And I'm not going to bother with that. That's pretty straightforward for parents, even before Common Core. So um, this is all good right here. And that wraps up. This is first grade, module three, lesson 11. And that kind of tidies up this quick lesson where really I'm advocating mostly for parents and teachers to consider um, not using the problems as written by Eureka Math and instead let students conduct their own survey. Conduct their own survey and that is going to increase their own, oops, survey. And that's going to increase their engagement and let students have fun with math rather than math being something that is done to the students.